We do have breaking news this morning. Police are looking for a man who fought another man overnight and left him in the street for dead. This happened just after 1030 in South Minneapolis near 35th Street and 1st Avenue South. When police got there, the man was unconscious. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. Witnesses told police the two men involved in the brawl did know each other. Officers have not found the suspect, but they say the public's not in danger. Check this out. New video this morning shows would be car thieves in St. Paul caught in the act, but instead of finding freedom on the open road, they were arrested by police. Ellery McArdle has the gotcha moments caught on camera. Car thefts are a big problem in St. Paul is what you've been saying, Ellery. Yeah, that's right, Lauren. In fact, last month alone, 166 vehicles were taken off St. Paul streets, and in most of those cases, the keys were either left in the ignition or the cars were left running. So this time of year, so many of us warm up our cars for just a few minutes before we head out into the cold, but St. Paul police say don't do it. It's not worth the risk, and here's a prime example of why. I want to show you this video. If you watch the maroon vehicle parked outside of a store, the driver walks in the store, and then we fast forward the video about a minute later to two people take the car and drive off. That's how fast these thefts happen. One message police have for you. Don't leave your keys in the car or leave it running no matter how cold it is outside. These thefts are happening all over the city and no neighborhood is immune to it. You think, OK, I, I live here. This this will be no problem. That's not that's not the way it works. So to fight this problem, St. Paul police is using bait cars to catch thieves like this guy. He was arrested in June for this theft and later convicted. Police park cars around the city and they have cameras inside of them. They say this ongoing program is meant to get people to think twice about stealing a car. And also in these types of thefts in general, a lot of times the criminals speed off and create more dangerous situations for themselves and others. So police are trying to avoid that. And when we talk about the top three brands that are targeted by thieves in St. Paul, Hondas, Toyotas, Fords, especially ones police say made in the 90s because for some reason thieves are able to get into those models much more quickly. Back to you. Ellery, thank you. Interesting stuff. Well, live this morning from our nation's capital, President Trump is waking up to a new reality, divided government. For the first time in his administration, Democrats have control of the House in the middle of this partial government shutdown. Today, President Trump will meet with some Democratic lawmakers at the White House. This is around two of negotiations after Wednesday's round one meeting. The hope here is to try to come to some sort of a compromise. So if you're an optimist, maybe you're thinking, hey, that's good news. The government could reopen sooner rather than later. But if you're looking at the political realities here, the president has been very firm. He wants money for a border wall, $5 billion. And Democrats have been pretty clear that's not happening. If the shutdown continues into tax filing season, don't expect to get your refund right away. During a shutdown, the IRS only retains about 12% of its workforce. They will still process returns and accept payments. However, they will not process refunds, nor will they respond to questions from taxpayers. Now, that's a big concern considering massive changes were made to the tax system for the 2018 tax year. Chris, sticking with politics for our digital dive this Friday morning. We're still buzzing this morning. It was a really busy day on Capitol Hill yesterday as the 116th Congress was sworn in. And it's also a big shift in power as the Democrats now control the House. And a lot of people are saying this is the first time Congress is looking like America. It's the most diverse group of lawmakers in history. In fact, there's a record number of women, more than 100, the first Muslim woman, Native American women, and more black members in the House than ever before. And this is a moment that a lot of people here are sharing that was going viral this morning. It's from Deb Halan and Sharice Davids, the first, the two first Native American women to ever serve in Congress. You can see them there embracing and wiping away tears of joy after being sworn in. It was also a historic day for Nancy Pelosi, who was the first female Speaker of the House. So help you God. I do. Congratulations, Madam Speaker. Pelosi, they're taking the oath surrounded by the children and grandchildren of House members. And after she took the gavel back in Democratic power for the first time in eight years, Pelosi talked about the diverse freshman class. Our democracy will be strengthened by their optimism, idealism, and patriotism of this transformative freshman class. And it was a really big day for Minnesota's 5th District uh, new congresswoman as she 
was there with her dad making her way to the Washington DC airport. We shared this photo yesterday, but it's been retweeted and shared thousands of times. A lot of people loved this. And she also tweeted this that is getting a lot of love on social media. Uh, she's tweeted sworn in and ready to throw down for the people. And she's standing there with newly sworn in Congresswoman as well, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who is the youngest Congresswoman in history. So two very young, powerful women there. And the big to do though for Congress now uh, is of course the government partial shutdown. They wanna mm -hmm. get things back up and running, but uh, it's a big task to do for all of these new congressmen and women. Absolutely, it was interesting yesterday. You saw the big celebration as they all yeah. got sworn in and then almost immediately they're taking votes. This Down is how business. their term is going to start. Yeah. So uh, a lot to work on there. Yeah. Well, let's uh, go to Chris now with the morning rush. Now time for your morning rush. We're waiting to learn the names of the man and woman hit and killed after trying to walk across a busy intersection. Police say a 72 year old driver hit them last night around 530 at Woodbridge Court and Larpenter Avenue near the border of Roseville and St. Paul. Police say the driver is cooperating. Some closure this morning for two Minneapolis police officers. They learned they will not face any charges in the deadly shooting of a man in North Minneapolis back in November. Newly released body cam video shows the moments the officers confronted 36 year old Travis Jordan. It shows Jordan stepping towards them with a knife and refusing to drop the weapon before officers fired shots. The Hennepin County attorney says the officers actions were justified. Wisconsin lawmakers want to cut down on drunk driving. This is what they have in mind. Right now, Wisconsin is the only state that does not criminalize first time offenders, but a new Republican bill aims to change that, making the first DWI a misdemeanor punishable by up to $500 in fines and 30 days in jail. Democrat Governor elect Tony Evers supports the idea. All right, Tracy, what is the one thing we need to know about the weather today? We've got good news. It's going to be warm for the weekend. Another great sunny day, just like we had yesterday. And our high temperature will be right around 41 degrees. And we could be tying or breaking our old record. So record-breaking heat for January 4th. I think we'll take it. Ooh, yeah, definitely sounds good. Thanks a lot, Tracy. Well, we have new information about the opening date of a popular winter attraction. At one point, the ice castles were scheduled to open today, but warmer weather, well, they pushed it back to a week from today. Kaya Edwards is live at the site in Excelsior. And Kaya, even with these warm temps, is that still the plan? Yeah, a spokesperson confirms, yes, that is still the plan, but keyword plan because bottom line, they need freezing temperatures in order to work on the castle. It's looking pretty good right now, but when it is open, once it is, there's going to be slides, tunnels, fountains, crawl spaces, so it's pretty interactive. All right, and here's the thing you need to remember to bring with you, a camera. For most of us, that means our phone. All right, coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to tell you what employees here are doing as they wait for temperatures to fall. Back to you. Yeah, you don't want to forget a camera with those. No. Those are always pretty incredible. Thank you, Kaya. <laughs> also, was that your guess? Ooh. What was that? Oh, she asked if that was my guess. Was that your guess? You know what? You asked yeah. me a question that I totally forgot about it, so now I know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to go about things. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, we'll catch yeah. up with you in a bit there, Kaya. Also ahead on Sunrise, putting his passion on the plate. Why one highly regarded chef is feeding students school lunch. Then it's a story that is grabbing the nation's attention, how police are connecting the dots to this man who's now on the run after killing a seven-year-old girl. And live look at the Friday morning commute along 694. Traffic still moving along around the Twin Cities Metro. Drive time's average. I told myself that I would be healthier, which is like the most typical one, but I have a wedding coming up in June and a wedding dress to fit into. So I want to, you know, get in the best shape of my life. That's my New Year's resolution. 